As the largest economy in Africa, Nigeria is a very attractive investment prospect. With me to speak about the potential opportunities in this market is Sony Iori, founder and CEO of Dunn Lauren Merrifield, one of the country's most renowned investment houses. Well, Sony, Nigeria has seen exceptional growth over the past few years. But in terms of the financial market, how developed is that? The financial market, I would classify as still at the frontier to emerging market levels. You know, the, the rebasing of, of Nigeria's economy um, has obviously moved Nigeria into that sort of larger economy. It's about the 26th largest, you know, in the world today. The financial markets, however, does not reflect that sort of composition of what makes the, the, the GDP of Nigeria. And that's why you have today discussions of, you know, the telecom companies should be floated on the exchange. In other words, the exchange should reflect more of the economy than the banks. Today, the banks actually, um, uh, what I say, dominate, you know, the, 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 the financial markets. And I think it needs to be much, much, much broader in terms of its outlook, products and reach. Well, how involved are you in the development of the Nigerian financial markets and, in fact, the country as a whole? As a person and as a firm, we're pretty much in the thick of things, um, you know, right from my, my first role when I, when, I, when I left the World Bank, the IFC. In fact, when I was actually working with them at the time, I helped the Nigerian economy or the Nigerian government to develop a bond market. That was actually my first major assignment in Nigeria. And now we're looking at the, the housing market. Um, I also work, I mean, I've served on, on several committees from, from the Stock Exchange and from the Securities and Exchange Commission. And we're actually working on one right now to actually revolutionize the way uh, the market players actually operate within the market to make it a lot more broader and much deeper. Well, your company acted as advisors to set up the Nigerian Mortgage Refinance Company, which was launched earlier this year. Why was this so important? Housing in Nigeria, if you think about the population, currently 170 million people, um, you know, mortgages to GDP is like uh, 0. X whatever percent. It's just, it's a nominal number. So the whole idea of having this company, which is as a public-private partnership, is actually to now provide that catalyst to help this, this market grow. Um, and, I mean, just reading the papers this morning, they're talking about a market of about 60 trillion. I think I'd say about half, you know, uh, a trillion pounds in terms of even just to, to cure the housing deficit. So this is quite an important uh, company. Um, that actually becomes that sort of catalyst to bring in both the demand side and the supply side uh, of the housing market together and hopefully try to make housing a bigger component of the GDP of Nigeria going forward. We're looking at the Nigerian stock market now and after a poor performance in the first quarter, things are starting to pick up. So what opportunities are there for investors? The key areas that exist, medium to long term, power sector, um, for obvious reasons, um, the agricultural sector um, is also another um, area that uh, is becoming very, very attractive. The housing market certainly is a, is, is a big you know, opportunity. And then the other areas which have been the, the normal mundane areas that investors have normally played in, the banking sector, you know, the telecom sector, etc. You know, so it, it is a very fertile ground, um, you know, but again, obviously certain issues and risks do exist. And that's why it is still, to my mind, you know, still a frontier market. And investors obviously need to be uh, cognizant of, of, of the risks that exist. But then the rewards are also compensating for those risks. Well, looking to the future now, and what do you anticipate to be the future trends and challenges, in fact? In terms of the trends from an investor perspective, I think it really depends to a large extent on the security situation. Um, in given one, what's going on in Nigeria today, one, one can't ignore that fact. And I think it really, it largely depends on how that's handled. If handled very well, um, I think the potential going forward is absolutely tremendous for, for both domestic and international uh, investors. Well, obviously, we're coming up to the elections in 2015. So how safe would you say Nigeria is for investors? I always like to say to investors, we need to get out of this sort of like cyclical, you know, every four years an election and then everything has to sort of stop, you know, until elections is over and then we can start again. It has to get to a point where, you know, there's the elections. Yes, it's normal. And, you know, investors just continue. The one advice I would give to investors is just generally speaking, you know, is, is to monitor how the security situation um, is being managed. And if managed well, I, I see absolutely no disruption 
in terms of investor appetite um, for the sort of yields and returns they're getting out of, of that country um, today. So my, my view would be, yes, continue to invest, but of course, you know, monitor what's going on. Sony, thank you. Thank you very much.